the week winds down, we're happy to have you watching CNN Student News. I'm Carl Azus. Today's international coverage starts on the Korean Peninsula, where North Korea claims to have successfully tested a hydrogen bomb. It's an incredibly powerful nuclear weapon. And the communist nation's dictator, Kim Jong-un, said the underground test would make the world look up to his strong nuclear country. There is some doubt about this, though. Some international analysts say they're not sure North Korea is capable of making a complicated hydrogen bomb, and that the seismic magnitude detected from this test wasn't nearly as strong as an actual hydrogen bomb would generate. North Korea has bluffed in the past to try to intimidate rival countries like the U.S. and to make itself look more powerful on the world stage. Still, the United Nations Security Council said the test clearly broke its resolutions against nuclear weapons and that there would be consequences for North Korea in addition to the international sanctions already in place. If confirmed, it's not the first time North Korea has tested a nuclear weapon, but this could be the most powerful one by far. Three previous tests, all clustered within a few kilometers of each other between 2006 and 2013, were of atomic bombs or A-bombs, and we know how strong they are. This is what U.S. forces dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945 ultimately killing more than 200,000 people. But this test of what Pyongyang claims to be a hydrogen bomb takes things to a whole new level. The H-bomb is hundreds of times more powerful than an A-bomb. And here's why. Atomic bombs use a process called fission to split plutonium into smaller atoms, releasing massive amounts of energy. Now, hydrogen bombs use fusion. Instead of splitting big atoms, it combines small atoms like hydrogen. Essentially, it's two bombs in one, with the A-bomb working as a trigger for the H-bomb to release a much bigger nuclear punch. Now, if this was indeed an H-bomb, it would mark a major step forward in North Korea's nuclear capabilities and make the Hermit Kingdom much more of a threat. A couple reasons why we're visiting the U.S. state of New Hampshire next. One, early next month, it's scheduled to host the first primary contest for the upcoming U.S. presidential election. The primary will help determine the Democratic and Republican nominees for president. Two, there was a meeting earlier this week at Southern New Hampshire University. Several of the Republican presidential candidates were there. Its focus was on addiction and the state's heroin epidemic. It's an incredibly important issue to voters in the region. And while the GOP candidates each shared personal stories of how people they were close to struggled with addiction, it's not just Republicans or politicians who are talking about this. 3225, possible overdose, 718 Grove at Belmont Hall. 25-year-old male went to the bathroom. Substance abuse, a huge problem in New Hampshire. If we don't lift the stigma from this, people won't talk about it. They don't talk about it now. The problem of heroin in New Hampshire is unbelievable. I've had two town halls right here in New Hampshire where the only subject was substance abuse. It's a problem. We have to talk about How did we do last night on the group? 41. 41. Nice. It, it is at catastrophic proportions here in New Hampshire. In 2010, we had confiscated roughly 45 grams of heroin uh, total for that year and this year we're up to over 27,000 grams of heroin. If somebody's not paying attention and they come in to the city of Manchester, or for that matter really anywhere in the country, the heroin situation right now is at epic proportions. We know you want to get on Roll Call. The one way to do it is to make one request on each day's transcript page at cnnstudentnews.com. Providence Hall Charter School posted yesterday. It's in Harriman, Utah, the home of the Patriots. 
From there, we're traveling east to Burlington, Vermont. We've got the Panthers watching there at Lyman C. Hunt Middle School. And across the Atlantic, in Jouer les Tours, France, it's great to see our viewers at Lycée Jean Monnet. In U.S. education, there's a big focus on STEM fields, science, technology, engineering, and math. And if you always find yourself looking up whenever you hear a plane, flight test engineering may be your future. Median salary is around $85,000, though it can exceed $100,000 a year. It's a broad field. You might build and test out new aircraft. You could reinvent a type of missile. You could even wind up engineering a new sport for daredevils. A wingboard is basically an airfoil, kind of like a flying wing, like a stealth bomber. And the rider's basically strapping his feet to the top of that thing and getting pulled behind the airplane. It's the equivalent of wakeboarding, except instead of behind a boat on water, you're behind an airplane carving through clouds. I'm a tinkerer. Since I was a kid, I was the one taking things apart and trying to figure out what I could build from them in the basement. And you know, that just continues to this day. This idea came from a childhood cartoon. The Disney cartoon Tailspin had Kit Cloud Kicker, and he would jump out of the back of the airplane, throw this little board that looks kind of like this under his feet, and then surf the cloud. The first one started as a piece of paper, and I'd toss it and see how that would work. Once I realized that worked, I started building my foam. Just bought some flat foam. Oh. And from there, we just started scaling up. He's upright. Yeah. Version 5 was the first real rider, human rider, that can make most of the motions that the rider could. But it wasn't quite big enough to get all the safety features into it and to really show that this is going to work in full scale. Parachute attached. That's where we got to where we're at today with version 6, the 40% prototype. So we got a whole bunch of the local RC club members out here. This will be the first public demonstration of the wing board. So let's go over the flight before we get going. So the way that we're going to be performing the test tomorrow is we've got a 40% tow plane. Linkage on! Tow plane will accelerate off the ground, the wing border will get lift, come off the ground, and they'll just fly right behind each other in formation. All right, a little bit lower on this next one as we come around. Some of the things we're looking for in testing is stability and control. We want to make sure that the wing board's stable, that the rider's able to withstand the forces that he's experiencing. All right, I'm good to do a barrel roll. We're looking to see how much maneuverability and control the rider has. What's he capable of doing? Is he able to stay in a safe position? Is he able to go out and have fun? Okay, rolling. That was gorgeous. <laughs> Where I really trace the wing board back to is the wingsuit guys. It's aimed at the, the wingsuit flyers that are bored of jumping off the mountains now and only being able to fly for 60 or 90 seconds. You can fly for as long as your muscles are going to let you. That's going to be the limit now. All right, we're going to be popping the chute on this pass. Flying's my passion, and this is just that meeting of pushing the boundaries of aviation, pushing the boundaries of what the human being can do, and doing something that's never been done before in aviation and really be able to, to explore the edge of the envelope. In the realm of ruminants, there are sheep, and then there's Sheila. She was a little more sheep than other sheep. Sheila was lost in a forest six years ago without a shepherd or a shearer. But after being rescued recently, Sheila dropped 46 pounds in a single shearing. So it's no surprise she was sprightly in showing off her svelte silhouette, which undoubtedly keeps her cooler at the height of Australia's summer season. Before that, she was a bit of a woolly mammoth. <laughs> and it makes sense after all that time on the lamb. Does she feel better? Sheerly. Can she move faster? Man, she can hoof it. And some of you might think that sheep puns are a bad idea, but honestly, it is tough to bleat them. I'm Carl Azus, and that's CNN Student News.